So if they put any one of these 10 episodes out, it would be easy to just say, this is fucking retarded. This is obviously not obstruction of justice. But since there's 10 of them, there's, there's just a lot. Look at that, 10, you know? But let's go through each one of them. Because each one is more ridiculous than the last. Okay, here we go. Number one episode that could constitute obstruction of justice. Dun, dun, dun. The campaign's response to reports about Russian support for Trump. During the 2016 presidential uh, campaign, questions arose about the Russian government's apparent support for candidate Trump after WikiLeaks released politically damaging uh, Democratic Party emails that were reported to have been hacked by Russia. Trump publicly expressed skepticism that Russia was responsible for the hacks at the same time he and other campaign officials privately sought information about further planned WikiLeaks releases. Nothing. So that's number one on the list of obstruction of justice. Not even a good opener. Trump was skeptical over whether it was Russia. By the way, in this report, no evidence that it was Russia that hacked the DNC or Podesta. None of that's put forward. But that's, that's now obstruction of justice. Being skeptical about the official story. Being skeptical and also being like, oh, hey, we want that stuff. Are, are you like, what are you crazy that you think there's any political campaign that wouldn't want the rest of that information? Fucking I wanted the rest of that information and I didn't care about Trump winning the presidency. Who, who doesn't want the information? Hillary Clinton had an ex-British spy out digging up dirt on Donald Trump to try to get any information they could. Are you kidding me? I mean, like right now, the fucking there's there's a legal fight going on over them trying to get Trump's financial records. You think the Democrats don't want information on Trump? But so that's evident. That's example number one, where it might be obstruction. He was skeptical about it being Russia, and wa and they wanted the information from WikiLeaks. That's number one. Okay, number two. Conduct involving FBI Director Comey and Michael Flynn. In mid-January 2017, incoming National Security Advisor Michael Flynn falsely denied uh, to the Vice President and other administration officials meeting with a Russian ambassador. Um, on July 27th, the day after the president was told that Flynn had lied to the vice president, he had made similar statements to the FBI. The president invited FBI Director Comey to a private dinner at the White House and told uh, Comey that he needed loyalty. On February 14th, the day after the president requested Flynn's resignation, the president told outside advisors, now that we fired Flynn, the Russia thing is over. So they go on to say that Donald Trump asked uh, them to go easy on Flynn because he's a good guy after that. So let's just get things straight here and what was really going on. The first time that Comey and Trump met, Comey, the FBI director, attempts to blackmail Donald Trump. This is an old FBI trick. It goes all the way back to the days of J. Edgar Hoover. He hands him this damning information on him and was like, hey, I got this damning information on you. Look at all this shit. He hands him a big packet of what we now know are lies. We know this for sure. This has been confirmed. We know this for sure. It's, it's just filled with bullshit, okay? Bullshit about Trump pissing on Russians and all this other stuff. Trump's like, what? I, I bang Eastern European whores in America. He goes, I bang porn stars. I don't, I don't even hide this shit. Like, that's what I do. This is all bullshit. Stuff about Michael Cohn going to Prague. He never went there. We know this all for a fact. None of this happened. So it's all lies. So when they just tell you that Trump asked for his loyalty, they're kind of leaving some things out of that context. Basically, what Donald Trump is dealing with here is an attempted deep state coup. Go look at what McCabe has done. They were talking about invoking the 25th Amendment. These are the guys around him. And he asked in under these circumstances, asked for whether James Comey was loyal to him or not. OK, like he's like, dude, basically, he's like, are you trying to fuck me over here? Because if you're trying to fuck me over, I'm going to fire you. You're my FBI director. I have the power to fire or appoint someone and appoint someone else. So are you loyal to me or are you not? That's the fucking question. And with the Michael Flynn thing, they were like, he was like, look, he lied to us. We fired him for that. And I think he's a good guy. There's no like Russia conspiracy theory, uh, consp uh, Russia conspiracy theory here. He knows that because he's Donald Trump and he's been exonerated on this issue. No one's really arguing that. So he was like, yeah, go easy on the guy. He's a good dude. Served his country. Blah, blah, blah. You know? You don't need to make an example of him. 
How is any of that obstruction of justice? This is insane. Okay, so that's number two. So that's number two, or if you're keeping track, number zero of episodes of obstruction of justice. Let's go to number three. The president's reaction to the continuing Russia investigation. In February 2017, the Attorney General Jeff Sessions began to assess whether he had to recuse himself from campaign-related investigations because of his role in the Trump campaign. In early March, the president told the White House uh, counsel, Don McGahn, to stop Sessions from recusing. And after Sessions announced his recusal on March 2nd, the president expressed anger at the decision, and told his advisors he should have an attorney general who would protect him. Okay. I think it's fair. Sessions recusing himself is the reason why this special investigation started. Because Sessions basically said, well, they're investigating the campaign. I was a part of the campaign. There's a conflict of interest there, so I'm stepping aside. Trump was like, no, you were a part of the campaign, so you know we weren't colluding with the Russians. Don't step aside, because if you step aside, then I have to deal with this fucking special investigation. It's going to suck the life out of the first two years of my administration. He's 100% right about that. But by the way, he doesn't do anything here. He asks his fucking the uh, his counsel... Uh, Dan McCann to um, stop Sessions from accusing himself. McCann advises against, and so he doesn't. That's that's your evidence of obstruction. That basically, so right now, what what you're thinking about here, right, is that you're imagine you're being investigated for fucking bullshit, which we all know is bullshit at this point, and you're your name's going to be tarnished. You're going to be called a traitor to your country on the news every single day, and you're like, can we not? Do that, that's obstruction. You got to just take it. Just enjoy it. Say thank you. Don't even deny it. How about that? When they say, are you a traitor to this country? Say, well, I, I'm just glad I'm they're investigating me. Yeah, I can't say. I can't say whether I am or whether or not. Can you imagine what the media reaction would have been if that was what Trump did? Jeff Sessions fucked over Donald Trump by recusing himself. And he actually did a lot of damage to the country also. Because he put us through this, this whole thing. Oh, yeah. I like that. Okay. Here we go. Number four. The president's termination of James Comey. On May 3rd, 2017, uh, Comey testified in a congressional hearing but declined to answer questions about whether the president was personally under investigation. Within days, the president decides to terminate Comey. Okay, so it happened to be within days of that. The president insisted that the termination letter, which was written for public release, state that Comey had informed the president that he was not under investigation. The day of the firing, the White House maintained that Comey's termination resulted from independent recommendations from the attorney general and deputy attorney general that Comey should be discharged for mishandling the Hillary Clinton email investigation. Okay, so yeah, he fired Comey and he said he was firing him for mishandling the um, Clinton email investigation. That's bullshit. He fired him because he was trying to blackmail the president of the United States of America. Okay. He wasn't honest about the reason why he was firing him. It's absolutely the president's right to fire the FBI director. And, and for Trump, that's kind of his thing. And the idea, yes, right. <laughs> Saying you're fired. I don't know. I think I've heard him say that a couple times or two, right? But this also is laughable that this was obstruction of, of an investigation against Donald Trump. In fact, see, they can't have it both ways. Like McCabe is asked on 60 Minutes, what was it that led you guys to start to investigate the president? And they go, well, it's his firing of Comey. Okay, so if firing Comey is what leads to the investigation, firing Comey can't also be obstructing the investigation, right? It, could, it can only be one or the other. So the, the truth is they had basically nothing to justify inve- investigating Trump to begin with. So they use firing Comey as a justification for investigating him. And now they're also trying to use it as an example of potential obstruction. Well, OK, so Comey gets fired and then um, and then Trump's investigated for years for, for two years after that. He doesn't fire any of these people who are investigating him. So isn't it reasonable to think maybe he wasn't firing Comey for investigating him? Maybe he was firing Comey for blackmailing him. And I'm not just like pulling this out of my ass. I've heard three different former CIA people who have been like, oh, no, absolutely. That was a blackmail move. 
That's why, like, I just assumed that right away because I know a little bit about the history of the FBI. I've read about J. Edgar Hoover, and I know what it is when at your first meeting, the FBI director hands you a bunch of dirt that they have on you. I know what that is, but a whole bunch of uh, CIA people have confirmed this. It's absolutely what he was doing. So that's why he got fired. It's nothing to do with this bullshit. And th the idea that that's obstruction of justice for an investigation that was about to start is complete bullshit. Certainly wasn't, in, uh, certainly wasn't obstructing the Mueller investigation because the Mueller investigation hadn't started yet. Okay, um, what are we up to here? Number five? All right, number five. The appointment of special counsel and efforts to remove him. On May 17th, uh, 2017, uh, the acting attorney general for the Russia investigation appointed a special counsel con to conduct the investigation and related matters. The president reacted to the news that special counsel had been appointed by telling advisors that it was, quote, the end of his presidency and demanding that Sessions resign. Ses Sessions submitted his resignation, but the president ultimately did not accept it. So that's number five. He was pissed off when he started being investigated for, uh, for something he didn't do, that we all now know he didn't do. So he was pissed off for that, um, and he was like, this is the end of my presidency. And again, like we said at the beginning, okay, he was maybe like, and this is, isn't this true with Trump on so many different issues? He, was, he may not have been literally correct, but the, the essence of what he was saying was kind of true. He was like, I'm fucked. Because if, if this is it, my, the whole thing is fucked. The whole make America great again, we're going to drain the swamp, reshape the government, that's basically over. And in a way it is. So, okay. So he was pissed and he demanded a ses ses um, Jeff Sessions' resignation, but then ultimately didn't take him up on it. So again, I mean, even if you were going to say demanding Jeff Sessions' uh, resignation is obstruction of justice, which I don't see how it is because... Jeff Sessions recuses himself, so an investigation starts. If you demand his resignation, the investigation doesn't go away. It doesn't in any way actually obstruct the investigation, but it's kind of like it would be like getting someone back for starting the investigation. Or, or if anything, protecting yourself from uh, the next false investigation coming your way. Yeah, maybe in other words, that's this investigation a... was false and that there was no Russia sure. collusion. But yeah. on top of, but even if you would grant so I think it's a real but stretch. Still isn't, but you're right, yes, it's not it's collusion. Not, it's not obstruction of justice. I mean it's not obstruction. Yeah, it's, yeah. So if you so even if he were to demand Sessions resignation because he recused himself, even if you think that would be obstruction but he didn't accept it ultimately. Jeff Sessions stayed on the job. So there, there's nothing here. I, this Again, just grasping at straws. All right, number six. Efforts to prevent public disclosure of evidence. In the summer of 2017, the president learned that media outlets were asking questions about the June 9th, 2016 meeting at Trump Tower between senior campaign officials, including Donald Trump Jr. and a Russian lawyer who is said to be offering damaging information about Hillary Clinton as part of Russia uh, and its government support for Mr. Trump. On several occasions, the president directed aides not to publicly disclose the emails setting up the June 9th meeting, suggesting that the emails would not leak and that the number of lawyers with access to them should be limited. That's an obstruction. That's just not wanting to give information over to the public. That's yes. not even the investigation. Yes. He didn't want to give he didn't want people to release to the public information that could be politically damaging to him. Do I even need to address this? What's the next one? He ate noodles on a Wednesday? <laughs> like, it's just so, it's like, okay, so there's a meeting, which by the way, if you're arguing that it would be like, if the public didn't know about the Trump Russia Tower, or the Trump the Don Jr. meeting with the Russian woman in Trump Tower, if the public didn't know about that, that would be obstructing justice. Well, the public knows about it. The public's known about it forever. Mueller knew about it. He investigated it. There's nothing criminal about it. Absolutely nothing criminal about it. Um, so I, I don't know. That, that might actually be the most ridiculous one yet. All right. Number seven. Further efforts to have the attorney general take control of the investigation. Okay. So in early summer 2017, the president called Sessions at home and again asked him to reverse his recusal from the Russia investigation. Sessions did not reverse his recusal. 
uh, okay, but you know, he's being investigated for something that he didn't do, and we all know this, and it's not, it seems to me that he's going through the legal channels to see if the attorney general will take back his recusal. I don't know. This is his Justice Department. It seems like, yeah, he thinks this is going to be a witch hunt. And a big part of this also is that, um, which which they don't include here, is that I forget the exact numbers, but it was something like 70, 80 percent of the uh, investigators working under Mueller were tied to Hillary Clinton in some way, which is, by the way, these are the people who wrote this report. This is why yeah, it's so damning to Donald also, Trump. They were saying that they left really good jobs for this. And at first they were trying to paint that, that that's how moral this investigation is. Yeah, but there's another way to look at that. High paying lawyers left these unbelievable jobs. And if you're like, okay, that sounds reasonable until you find out that they're all enmeshed in Hillary Clinton lawyers. And you're like, well, what are these people up to then? Yeah. You're talking about people who donated money to Hillary Clinton, people who were outright supporting Hillary Clinton and people who were really, really anti-Trump. You know, that's like more so than even pro Hillary Clinton, really, really anti-Trump. So, yeah, of course, Trump wants to get uh, um, the attorney general to be overseeing this thing. I, I don't see how that's obstruction of justice. And then again, of course, what's the, the craziness thing here is that the, you're not accusing Donald Trump of attempted obstruction of justice. The crime would be obstruction of justice. So even if this was an attempt, he didn't get it. It wasn't successful. He didn't get Jeff Sessions to, to unrecuse himself. All right, I believe we're up to number eight. Efforts to have McGahn deny that the president had ordered him to have the special counsel removed. Okay? So in early 2018, the press reported that the president had directed McGahn to have the special counsel removed in June of 2017 and that McCann had threatened to resign rather than carry out the order. So this is, the, it, so this is a, a White House counsel this McGahn guy, and they're claiming that Donald Trump at one point asked him to remove the special uh, counsel. Their words ordered him to remove the special counsel. His, his advisor advised against doing it, and what happened ultimately? He didn't, he didn't do, do it. it. So the idea is that Donald Trump, who's had the power to remove the special counsel this entire time, once thought about doing it. Now, they're claiming he ordered him. Trump's saying he didn't. This is in dispute right now between, like, Giuliani and Trump are saying basically this didn't happen. That more or less, it's not that he ordered him to do it. Trump came out and said, people follow my orders. If I give someone an order, they do it, you know? And if they don't follow an order, they're probably going to be fired themselves immediately. But he didn't say that part. He just said, if, if I give an order, they follow it. Um, so what they're saying more or less is that he thought about the idea. He was talking about the idea. And they, and they advised him against it, and ultimately he didn't do it. Yeah, and, and we all know Donald Trump says crazy shit late at night. Yes. I bet that conversation was at two in the morning after his fourth bowl of pudding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and probably. That's when he says like stupid that. shit. But can you imagine this standard by anyone by anyone else? Like if you ever even thought about, you know, like even even like asked for advice about something and someone was like, Yeah, I don't think this is a good idea. We shouldn't do it. It's and like they didn't almost every it. day I say, Bring me next door, I'm gonna eat our producer Brian's asshole. Right now, to teach him a lesson. And only two or three times a week does it happen. Yeah, but I say it every day. Every day, multiple times And most times of the time, I don't mean it. M yeah, 50-50. People say shit all the time, and they never do it. Just, how often have you said, I'm going to go fucking murder that guy? Oh, man. And how often do you do it? Today. Yeah, there you go. All right, so now we're up to uh, number nine, I believe. And it's conduct toward Flynn and Manafort. After Flynn withdrew... Uh, from a joint defense agreement with the president and began cooperating with the government, the president's personal counsel left a message for Flynn's attorney reminding them of the president's warm feelings toward Flynn. Warm feelings. Well, how can you criticize that? During Manafort's prosecution and when the jury in his criminal trial was deliberating, the president praised Manafort in public, said that Manafort was being treated unfairly and declined to rule out a pardon. Hey, can you believe this bullshit? This is what they're saying is grasping at straws? That he basically expressed an opinion? So now, now he can't speak. Now basically him exercising his First Amendment rights are obstruction of justice. Can you imagine? Like, imagine you're accused of a crime. 
and somebody around you is now um, working with the state who's prosecuting you, and you go, hey, for the record, I think that guy's a really great guy. And they go, that's obstruction of justice. Do you, do you see why they need 10 of these things? Because if you put any one of them up there and actually let people dissect it, it's like they picked the perfect number that the American public won't be able to handle. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, there's 10. Well, I'm not going to look through all 10 of them. I mean, I guess they got a bunch of shit. But if you put any one of these, these are so flimsy. There is no case for obstruction of justice here. All right. And uh, let's see. This should be 10 and uh, the final. I think it's also like the Letterman top 10 list. It's just yes. 10. Is, it's, it's, it's a complete unit. Yeah. You're like, well, you got to 10. You did it. Yeah. you never seen a Letterman top nine list. No, it's It just doesn't feel good. Yeah. yeah exactly. But that's a good point. So number 10 is conduct involving Michael Cohn. The president's conduct toward Michael Cohn, a former Trump organization executive, changed from praise for Cohn um, when he falsely minimized the president's involvement in the Trump Tower Moscow project to castigation of Cohn when he became a cooperating witness. So more or less, he started uh, shitting on Cohn after, uh, after Cohn was shitting on him. That's what they've got. So yeah, 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 yeah. The whole Russian collusion thing was a bunch of bullshit. Oh, yeah, th this, there was absolutely nothing there. Oh, yeah, a, a presidential candidate was spied on by the opposition uh, government. He was, his presidency was derailed for the first two years, and the story is that this was all bullshit. But here's the real story. Those 10 pieces of nothing. That's what the media is trying to spin to you right now. It is, it is outrageous.